Okay, welcome to the next episode where we look at difficult questions that can be solved using nothing but GCSE skills. I'm the GCSE Maths Tutor and let's have a look at today's question. So, we're going to look at how to build it first. So to build this question, we take a circle. Now inside that circle, we're going to inscribe a rectangle. So here's our rectangle and on the outside of the sides of those rectangles, we're going to add a semicircle which is which diameter is the same length as the sides of the rectangle. So this is our shape. And what we're gonna have a look at is working out the area of the shaded region shown within that shape. So we also need a bit of information and we've got that the side lengths are 10 and 24. So this is gonna be your question, trying to find out the area of the shaded parts shown. So I would encourage you, obviously you need to write this question down. I would say pause the video and we're gonna get started in just a second. Okay, so moving on with this question. Now, if you have got an answer, please do leave a comment down below and let me know what you, where you're at already or if you've managed to get this before we've gone over it. So getting started, let's move this out of the way. So what we're going to have a look at to start with is thinking about how we would answer this question. Now, if we remove the circle from this question, you'll see that on the outside of the rectangle there, we have some semicircles. So bearing in mind, we know the lengths of the rectangle, we should be able to work out the area of those semicircles. Right, putting the circle back in, what else could we have a look at? Well, we know that there's a rectangle in the middle and we have the area of that as well. So if we were to remove the rectangle from the area of the circle, that would give us the area of those segments. So we could also work out the area of the segments. And by doing that, we'd also have the area of the rectangle. So that is looking at what we might want to think about when approaching this. Now, second of all, we are going to have to also work out the area of the circle. So we need to think about, OK, well, we've got 10 and 24, but how are we going to work out the radius? So we might want to have a look at using the rectangle to work out the length of the diameter. And that might involve using some further maths as well. And we've got the lengths 10 and 24, so we should be able to do that. So in order to answer this question, there are some formulas that you are going to need, and those formulas are shown on the screen. So we've got Pythagoras theorem, we've got the area there for a rectangle, and we have the area for a circle. So if you think maybe if you couldn't have a go before, maybe you could have a go now, pause the video and see if you can have a go at answering this one. Okay, so moving on. Right, let's get started then. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is obviously work out that diameter, and we can do that using Pythagoras theorem. So using 10 and 24, we can say that the diameter, which I'm going to call d, is equal to the square root of 10 squared plus 24 squared. We can then simplify that. 10 squared is 100, and 24 squared is 576, which obviously you can work out doing 24 times 24. And then we can simplify that further by adding those together, which makes 676. Now, you might not know this off the top of your head, but it's only going to be slightly bigger than the 24. And the square root of 676 is 26, which you could probably work out just by knowing that 6 is on the end there. So we've got the diameter, and that is 26. And we know that for the radius, that is going to be half of the diameter. So the radius of this circle is going to be 13, and we'll call that r. Now we can work out the area of the circle. So for the area of the circle, we'll keep it to the side here. We know that to get the area of a circle, we do pi times radius squared. So that'll be pi times 13 squared. 13 squared is 169. So we can say that that is 169 pi. Right, moving on to the next part. So we've got 169 pi as the area of the circle, but where can we go next? I'm going to go with working out the area of the rectangle to start with, as that's nice and easy. We do 10 times 24, and we'll get that the area of the rectangle is going to be 240. So we'll put that onto the right hand side, and we'll just keep that for when we need it. So what can we do with the area of the circle and the area of the rectangle? Well, we've already had a look at Actually, if we take away the rectangle from the circle, that's going to give us that pink shaded area there, the four segments around the outside. So in order to get that, let's take the area of the circle and subtract the area of the rectangle. And we can write that like this. 
169pi take away 240. So that's going to be the area of the four segments. So we've got the area of the four segments and now we can start to have a look at our next element. So another logical thing for us to start having a look at would be the area of those semicircles. So if we get rid of that circle and think about how we could work those out. Now each of those semicircles we have the diameter for. We have 24 for the ones on the left and the right and 10 for the ones on the top and the bottom. So we can work them out separately. Now I'm going to work out the area of all those four semicircles but I'm just going to do them two at a time. So I'm going to start with the ones on the outside. So looking at the ones on the left and the right, the radius of those semicircles is 12. So to work out the area of one, we would do 12 squared times pi. Now, because there is two semicircles, we could think about halving it and then again timesing it by two, but because there's two of the same semicircles, we may as well just keep it as one whole circle. So we'll leave it as 12 squared times pi. For the semicircles on the top and the bottom, then we have the radius of five. So again, we can do that, we can do five squared times pi, and that would be the area of that circle or the two semicircles put together. So simplifying that, we have 144 pi plus 25 pi, that's just 12 squared and five squared, and adding those together gives us 169 pi. Now you might have already noticed something already there, we already had 169 pi earlier on when we were looking at the area of the four segments. So we have the area of the four semicircles around the outside. Now let's bring back that circle. So thinking about the fact that we have that circle now, we have the area of the four segments and we have the area of the four semicircles. So if we take the area of the four semicircles and we subtract the area of the four segments, that will leave us just with the part that we're looking for. So let's actually go about taking those away from each other. So we have the area of the four semicircles is 169 pi, and we are going to take away the area of the four segments, which is 169 pi, take away 240. And if we put them together, we end up with something like this. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful here because we're taking away 169 pi, and we're taking away the negative 240. Or in other words, we're getting a double negative there. And we know what happens there, that's going to become positive 240. So if we do 169 pi, take away both of those pieces, which you could put into a bracket, but hopefully you recognise that that's how that works when we take away a negative, we get the answer 240. And of course, the units here were in centimetres, so that's going to be centimetre squared. So our final answer is 240 centimetre squared. Now, Interesting question, can you spot the link between the answer and anything else in the question? And if you can, please do leave a comment and have a think about, does this apply to all sizes of rectangle inscribed within a circle in this way? And if you wanted a real extension here, you could have a look at, could you actually prove if that's the case? So see if you can spot the pattern between the answer that we got and anything else in the question. And does this apply if we change those numbers 10 and 24? There we go. Leave me a comment below and let me know. Okay, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you found that interesting. And please don't forget, leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you for the next episode.